Welcome to my SQL Server master class. Before starting this long course, it's very important to know the structure of this course so as not to get lost. This course is divided into three parts. Part one is about the transact SQL. We will deal with the simple queries like select, a date, and so on. And then we will tackle the, the more advanced queries like the join, inner join, full outer join, left join, CTE, and we will finish by seeing the power of the partition function, one number over partition by, and so on. Okay? The second part will deal about the with the administration part. Administration part. We will set up your backup strategy, the security, and see many cases of corruption on your database, and so on. We will talk about also about uh, the Azure uh, and other topics. And the third part of this course is the performance part. Okay, a long chapter on indexes, improving new storage procedure will be covered and many other topics on the performance. So if you have already have uh, SQL Server and Management Studio installed on your workstation, skip to part one. A quick note on my English accent. I know I don't speak the Shakespeare language perfectly, so please forgive me if sometimes I make a small mistakes in pronunciation okay, or accent. I worked a lot on the subtitles and the quality of the video, so that the training is of very good quality. Okay. So I won't bother you anymore and I hope you enjoy the course. Small explanation on the subtitles. By default, all the subtitles are activated on Udemy. You must deactivate them by clicking just here, okay, on the off. Uh, because know that all my videos are subtitles on Udemy. I spend a lot of time on this topic uh, so that the videos were a quite sound and visual quality. So to better support you, I found uh, it useful to put subtitles there. Okay? I will take no further on this subject and good training for you. A small definition of SQL. I am um, not going to go into the details of the history of uh, SQL Server because it's going to take a long time uh, and that's not the purpose of the course. So I'm going to make a small day summary presentation of SQL. So SQL is the product of Microsoft, which means structured query language. Okay, SQL is a definition language, uh, an LDD. It allows you to create table in a database as well as to modify or delete them. Okay, um, SQL is also a data manipulation language, LND. It's allows you to select, insert, modify, or delete data in a database table, which you will see in the next section. Okay? Um, SQL is also a protection language. With SQL, it's possible to define permission at the user level of the database. This is called 
DCL, Data Control Language. Okay. For your information, um, it's not case sensitive. It means that you can write extension in lower case and as well as upper case. Okay. SQL is a project that will be instead uh, installed to a database engine, however, on your personal computer on or on the server. Okay, it's a very rich, powerful, and varied project. Um, we are not going to talk about all things that SQL does. Uh, we are going to stick to the terms. Uh, very beginner for now okay and uh, you will see that it's quite powerful very very powerful okay low so let's go let's move on uh, the next section to work in this training two tools two tools sorry are needed you need the sql server developer edition tools so why the developer version because it's a free version, okay? Uh, in the link, as you see, there is the .exe. It's two applications attached to this course to work with, okay? So first of all, you will have to install SQL Server Developer Edition. It's the Microsoft product that, uh, that will install the database engine on your computer. I will show you afterwards uh, how to install these two products. Uh, there is also the installation of Management Studio. It's also a free tool that will allow you to, man allow you to manage the database. It's what will allow us to create a database, do a select, create a table, and, and so on. OK, it's the tool we are going to work with and i'm going to explain you also how to install it you will see that it's not very complicated uh, there are two dot exists so there are applications that attach to your course okay so you will have to download them to your computer once it's downloading we will move on to the installation of sql server developer Edition, edition, sorry. Okay, so come on, let's continue. Let's start installing the SQL Server project on your computer. So, as a reminder, SQL Server is the product that will install the database engine on your workstation. Okay, it can be on the server on you our computer uh, personally i have a windows 10 computer which is not very powerful uh, it has only uh, 8 gigabytes of memory a classic cpu uh, a core um, i intel i5 so it's not very powerful but it's a computer that will be enough to install the engine okay don't forget that the two dot exe files to install the management studio and the sql server product are attached to the course they are two completely free project okay uh, we start with the installation of sql server developer edition okay this one okay double click on the dot exe click on one and the windows appears okay uh, here by default when we launch sql server 2019 i always take the basic installation type no need uh, for custom or download magic okay so then 
uh, they ask you to accept the terms of the contract. We accept that. So in my case, I don't have um, enough space on my C drive. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to change it and put in on the D drive. It's not very complicated. Up. Okay, it's good. The, this has no effect. If you if you leave the installation on the drive C, of course, you can even leave the default path. It's not very important. Okay. I click on install just here. I'm going to pause the video because it's going to take some time. I will resume it when the installation is done. Okay. Once the download is complete, you will see Windows that tells you that the installation is complete okay um, here we have uh, on the left the installation name instance name by default the IO instance and so on okay we will say we'll see sorry that later to avoid this we need to do a customize just here customize a windows appears it concerns the updates i don't have any any update to do maybe uh, you will have to do some but you don't have to do them right away you can go directly to the next mode afterwards you have a king a kind of validation that will check if the extension is well done in relation to the small component you have on your workstation. Okay. Once you have successfully completed this step, you can click on next. After we that, uh, we have the installation rules. Here we, you have two choice. Okay. Perform a new installation or have features to a SQL Server 2019. Okay. For you, you are going to do a perform a new installation. Uh, you will you leave all this by default. Okay. We are not going to take care of it for the moment. We click on next. Since the developer version is the free version you leave it by default no need to enter a license number just below click on next you accept the terms of the contact accept and click on next and then a windows appears you have to check service database service database engine just where okay database engine service okay this is what will install your database engine on your workstation i am not uh, going uh, detail everything underneath that's not the point uh, at all you just going to check that one okay Click on next, next, a new windows appears. Here you have the default instance. Okay. Just here, uh, or a new named instance. Okay. What we call in instance on SQL server, it's a, an installation of your SQL server engine. Okay. It's important to know. Okay. It's a, installation when you hear this term it means just a installation uh, so we are going to take a name instance and we give it a name formation 
and click on next. This uh, bring, brings us to the server um, configuration. Okay, by default you leave everything. Don't try to add service accounts that uh, we put uh, on the server since if you install this on your computer, it's useless to put special account if you are a server, put service account that will launch SQL service. Okay. So click on next. Okay, there are some very interesting interesting things there. Uh, there's two mode, two authentication mode, Windows authentication mode and mixed mode. Okay, we're going to put mixed mode and uh, we put a password uh, as you as you want. Uh, I make uh, I put a password, sorry. And click on add current user. As you, as you can see, it's me. Okay. I am the SQL server administrator. Okay. So click on next. And there you we have the summary of everything you are going to install with the install button, install buttons, sorry, just here. Okay. Uh, you can see that we have done practically nothing. We have just made a few modifications. You can see that the installation is uh, quite simple. I'm going to click on install and the installation can take uh, 10 minutes or more. It depends, it depends on, uh, on the machine, on the machine when you are installed the SQL Server engine. Okay, and now I will show you how to install Management Studio in the next demo. Okay, so we install SQL Server on our workstation or on our server. Now we are going to install Management Studio. Okay, just here. Okay, we click twice on it. I'm going to pause the video to save time. When the windows appear, I click on run. Okay, you will see that the installation is not very complicated. I, to, I took the version, the release 18.7, sorry. Click on install. Uh, if you have Hover Management Studio installed, installed in your, on your computer, there is no problem. You can install both at the same time. Um, if you have a SQL 2019 version in Management Studio, there is no problem. You can install the one that is the most recent. Okay. So we will we'll install it. It will load the package and I pause again the video. Okay. It has finished. Downloading all its components, you can see uh, that the installation is finished. Okay, have you have seen um, there is nothing very complicated in for the installation of Management Studio. Uh, okay, in the next session we will launch Management Studio and we will connect to the SQL Server and we are going to learn how to handle management studio. Okay, to launch management studio, right click on your Windows logo and then you type 
management studio search and management studio ok let's make a zoom microsoft sql server management studio 18 ok i have a uh, uh, 2018 if you are a uh, uh, an another version it doesn't change change anything okay okay let's launch the management studio sorry okay here you have a notification mode we are going to stay on windows authentication okay we are not no, I'm not going to talk all that, all that SQL Server authentication. Uh, and remember, we named our instance formation. Okay, just here. Okay. Otherwise, another little trick you can pet uh, local host. Okay. You delete formation and you type local host. Uh, if you can cannot find your server, uh, click on browse here. Browse for more, and SQL will search for all instance installed on your server. Okay. Um, usually, the first authentication to the management studio is to connect to the database engine you install by with so we sql server so here management studio i'm going is going to be used to connect to the database engine to be able to do the administration on it okay create database manage security write performance and everything next everything else that follows okay so it's your tool that going to uh, going to let you manage all that i press connect here press on connect and uh, i have a window on the left on the left that appears it's the object explorer that will allow me to see everything that's on my database um, you can see as you can see there's on the database there there's nothing there at the moment which is normal you will see on how to create a database and if you want to make a new query you have to press on this for to write your first uh, transact sql script new query okay click on it to work on transact sql you can um, call it the sql direct uh, because it will hello um, to write query that SQL will understand. Okay, so we are, we press before new query and that's where we will write whatever uh, we want. Auto formation. Okay, and uh, that's where we will write uh, how famous SQL query. A fantastic query. Okay, we also have a lot of tabs up uh, and so on. We can do a lot of things uh, with the management studio. Okay, this was the first example of installing and setting up management studio to show you how it works. Okay, now we are going to get to the concrete and uh, the creation of the database and now we are getting we are getting into the game so let's go for the next demo and 
create the first database on new SQL Server Engine. Welcome to the first chapter of this masterclass course. We have installed Management Studio and SQL Server. So in this first chapter, we will only talk about the Transact SQL. Okay. It's a long chapter that will allow you to progress little by little and of course there are more than 50 exercises to help you validate your skills. We will first see how to create a database, a table and then start selecting them with the select, updating them with the update and, and so on. Okay? Then, where we will go further in the transact SQL with the between, the order by, the group by, the and, and the how, and all other topics. Okay? Uh, we will also discover the power of the join uh, through a long chapter of more than one an hour with the inner join, the full outer join the left join uh, you you will see that it's a long chapter about the join we will go even further in the transact sql by approaching the power of the merge the function of the aggregation the same the average the choose the format and so on finally we will discover the little uh, no CTE. I still don't understand it because it's very powerful. Deliver tables and the power of the partition function. Row number over partition by row unbundled proceeding and so on. As you can see, it's the, a very complete chapter which awaits you. Take your time to progress well because I spent a lot of time so that this chapter is uh, of a great quality and that you progress gradually okay so have a good training have a good day and see you soon So what is the database? This is the good question. A database is a container that helps us to organize the uh, data. Okay? It allows us to store and retrieve, and retrieve all the data in the database. We have, for example, many Excel files we are, uh, we, where all the data is captured. What, why not to centralize all these data in a single database? Okay, it's uh, in this example, I have three Excel files that are scattered everywhere. I have to delete and modify the select Excel file, so I have to modify it on the third Excel file, and so on. It's a mess. Okay. The ID uh, is to take the three files and centralize them in one database, which uh, will be much more convenient. Okay? So it will be much easier to query the data, update it, and delete obsolete data, and so on. So to centralize the data, there is no better better way than the database okay an extra information you can have 32,767 database on a one sql server instance okay remember that uh, in sql instance mean one sql installation okay so come on and let's go to a demo right now okay we have installed management studio we have installed uh, SQL server now we are going to create our first database 
Okay, we are going to do uh, it in two ways. One at the graphical level and one at the transact SQL level. Okay. First, we are going to connect to the server and click on connect. Okay. And put the name of the server just here. So here, put the name of your server and click on connect here. Okay, connect. Um, for the moment, you can see that there is no database in the Notion database. Okay, here, database, there is no still database. Okay. So come on, let's go, let's create a new database. Okay, so, okay, to create a new database, it's very simple. We click on, right click, and new database. And here we have the database name, here. Just the data name, data name, database, sorry, name, it's here, okay. So I'm going to put the name of my database in it and I'm going to call it formation right click on the bottom right on OK click on OK and at the top left the database formations appears just here your first database has been created you can see that it's very very simple to set up understand so we are going to create a second database in an sql query that's to say we are going to we are going to write the creation of a database so i um, click on new query just right here and I'll we do and we do create database create with database and I call it formation two and I after that we press execute button just Okay, so execute the query. So now we do a refresh on the top left on the database. Refresh and I have the database formation dos, formation two, sorry, that appears here. Okay, so in this exercise, we have created a database in two graphical ways using Management Studio and with the script, SQL script, by doing create database followed by the name of the database. Okay, so let's go for the next demonstration. Okay, so in the previous video, we see how to create a database. In this video, we will learn how to modify or delete the database. Okay, the modifi modification is done with the alter command. Just here, alter database with the name of your database following with the syntax modify name and the new name of your database okay so alt database formation to modify name formation free okay let's execute this query by the execute command execute that was very fast the database name here 
information field has been set. Okay. And if I do a refresh, right click on the database and refresh, you can see that the name has become formation, sorry, has become formation free. Okay. We can also do it graphically. Uh, right click on the database and click on rename, rename just here, rename and we set formation to and it's good formation to just here formation okay and to delete the database you have to do drop database okay so we write drop follow it by database and the name of the database that we want to delete in this case it's formation to next execute this query with execute command okay And we see if we are doing a refresh, we see that the database formation to at disappeared. Okay. So in this demo, we saw how to rename and delete a database on SQL Server. Exercise uh, take you keyboard. Okay, so the first question can you create a database called exercise? Okay, you create uh, this database with management studio and uh, by Transac SQL. Okay, second question then you we have to rename it to exercise to and at the end delete it okay so go to your keyboards i will give you the solution after the this exercise okay and i wish you good luck so here the answer for the exercise i hope it uh, wasn't uh, hard. He have the explanation of the solution of the exercise have I gave you. Okay, we are in the first question. We are going to create a database named exercise first in management studio. So we go to right click on new database new database just here a new windows appears and name it exercise <coughs> exercise okay it's as simple simple sorry as that click on ok ok and the exercise database appear on the top left so we just here okay if you are followed follow following my module you will find that it very simple i'm going to delete the database exercise and do it by the transact sql as well on delete and create the database. <coughs> so create database and the name exercise. exercise. I click on execute just here or F5. Okay. 
a new, a new keyboard. <coughs> Execute this query, and if I make a new refresh on the top left, I saw I see my exercise that is up here again. Okay. Then you we will rename the database to exercise two. Okay. So <clears throat> if you followed my course on database modification, we will do alter database. So alter database exercise modify name equal exercise two. Let's execute this query, and if I make, if I do a new refresh, the new name of my exercise database is now exercise two. Okay, you can see that it has been renamed, renamed, sorry, to exercise two. Okay. And we now remove the database. So <coughs> drop database exercise two. and let's execute this query. If I do a refresh, you can see that the exercise to database is now has now disappeared. Okay. So here we saw the create database, the alter database to modify the database, and there we saw the delete, how to drop a database. So here at the end of the chapter, you can take, you collect uh, that you know how to create a database, modify it, and how to delete it. And it's wonderful okay so let's go let's continue on the next demonstration so we saw uh, what is a, what it was a database now we will see what is a table in the database management system, a table is a relationship that can have relationship with other tables. Okay? It's what we call the relation database management system. So it's called a table or a relationship. It's made up of row and column. Okay? Just a row and with the column. The column is also called an attribute. Okay, in this table, you we will have rows and columns. The column will take the name, the column name, and we will have rows that we are going to insert where we are going to put the data in this table. Each row, each row will correspond to a data record. Okay? So the syntax for creating the, the table is simple to, to write. The syntax is create, create my table with the name of the table. Okay? Following the name of the column. Okay, and with the type of the column. Okay, so let's go to the demo right now. Okay, let's go for the creation of the table. Use formation. So what is use formation? It simply allows you to use the current database. Use formation means use this formation database 
and then I create my table on this database. For the moment, we are on the master database, just here. Okay. So I will use this command, use formation. Let's execute this query. You can see here that it has changed. Okay. Now we are on the formation database. We are working on this formation. I am on the formation database here. We will see that uh, you create many SQL scripts. If you don't use, use them on the database, you will have an error. Use formation is going to be very convenient to use this database and then to avoid writing over SQL queries on other database, okay? It's a very good practice to start with the use following by the name of your database at the beginning of the of a transact SQL, okay? Understood? So I do use formation. SQL comments. SQL commands here are made with two dashes. I put two dashes just here, here, and I can put my command. If I remove the dashes, it's not good. Okay, I have a neural syntax. If I put just two dashes, the commands is now good is very useful uh, why I am doing a callback on queries I have already uh, that I have already written so if I come back to it afterwards I know what I did in that query so here we saw how to use a precise database and dashes to add comments so we are on the right database, so here we go. Creation of a table with one column. So I'm going to start with transact SQL. Create table, let's make a zoom. Create table with the name of my table. Okay. With the name of the column and Vashar. Vashar is for strings of Carvater. Okay, we will talk about it in the another session. Okay, so it's a simple table with just one column. Let's execute this query. Command completely successfully. Okay, so I go back on my management studio interface. I go on table and I see, and here we can see my table. It just here, table, and my table is just that. Okay, so we create a table name my table with the transact SQL. And you can see the column, column names with the Vachar. Okay. Okay, so I will do it with Management Studio. We click on New, New Table. So we New Table. Okay, and the page appears with the name of the column. I will call him. I will call it uh, Exercise, for example. Um, with the column type and char. I save the table here, just here. Save the table. And the page in the page appears with the name of the table. I'm going to put, uh, for example, uh, exercise. Exercise, uh, example. Okay. 
and if you make a refresh your notable appear just here exercise example so we learn how to create a cloud so how to create sorry a table with transact sql and management studio okay so now we are going to create a table with two columns okay let's make a zoom okay we have to create table with the name of my table with the two columns column names vasha 2000 and with the comma following the the second column first name with vasha okay don't forget the second parenthesis just here okay because if i forget it and i do and if, if if i execute the query we have a incorrect syntax okay just add the parenthesis and execute this query it's perfect command completely so if i make a refresh my second table with the name my table tools is appears it's good okay and what if we move i remove the comma if i remove the comma and I execute this query we have a nicoran syntax near first name the comma is mandatory so we have to put the comma okay so in this demonstration we saw how to create a table with transact sql and with management studio and that's not bad okay right, thank you let's continue on the next demonstration okay this part is about how to delete or rename a table the modification of a table is done with the command the storage procedure sp rename okay i will tell you about it in the following section about the storage procedure okay so you, know, you need to run the command sp rename the delete of the table the deletion of the table is done with the drop table command Okay, let's begin with the transact SQL. We do SP rename. We are going to rename my table, <coughs> my table, my table two. This one, okay? Okay, let's go. SP rename, SP rename, okay? With my table to rename. So in this example, it's my table two with a count okay so um, don't forget the comma between the whole name and the new name comma and the new name we want to 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 give to the new table so in this example my table three okay let's execute this query execute I have an error just here. Let's execute again. Okay, it's a good example. Use formation. If you are not in the good database, it doesn't work. I use, I just use, don't use the good database. I am on the master database. The master in the master database the table table 2 my table 2 doesn't exist okay so use formation <coughs> as we saw in the previous demo use formation and if i make a sp rename again now it's working okay if i make a refresh on the top left refresh and now my table is called table three. We name 
uh, with Management Studio, it's very simple. Right click on the table and rename, just here. Okay. I want to give it, give to my table a new name, my table four, and it's done. You can see that it's very simple to rename a table with Management Studio. So we rename a table with two, uh, sorry, both way, okay? In Management Studio and Transact SQL. Now I want to delete my table, my table for, uh, I would do drop table, okay? Drop table, like uh, is the second example with drop database. So you uh, replace database with table, drop table, my table for. And if I refresh the table, my table for on the right doesn't exist on the top left. Okay, it disappears. So in this demo, we learn how to rename a table in two ways. And we also learn how to delete it in two, two ways, in Management Studio and in Transac SQL. Exercise to you, keyboard. Uh, can you create, for the first question, can you create a table named simple table with the following com columns? Um, column one and column two with the data type and char ten. Okay, as, as show below on these pictures. Okay, for the second question, finally, can you rename this table and, and make it simple table two and then to finish delete it? Okay, good luck. Okay, let's go for the correction of the exercise. I will give you the solution of the exercise right away. Don't forget the dashes, okay? Uh, the dashes are not optional. If I remove them, you see there is a syntax error, okay? No, don't forget the dashes. First exercise is the creation of the simple table with two columns. Okay, let's go. Let's write the query. So create table. Create table with the name of the table. So it's simple table. Following the name, column name, um, column one. with the type of the data, data uh, and then don't forget the comma and with the second column, column two and sharpen. It's important to do not forget the second parenthesis just here. Okay. Okay, it's good. Let's execute this query. And if I make a refresh on the top left, my my, my wonderful simple table that I create on the right is just here. Simple table. Okay? We have two columns. Column one and Column two. Okay, it's good for the first question. Finally, can you rename this table and make it simple table two and then delete it? Okay, so for rename the table, SP rename, simple table. with comma and simple table two. Okay, so let's execute 
again this query and if I make a refresh on the top left refresh my table simple table 2 has been renamed okay then to finish we are going to delete this table this table it's very simple drop table table sorry drop table simple table to let's execute this query and refresh you can see that the symbol table to on the right has disappeared on the left okay here's the correction of the exercise Okay, take your keyboard, it's up to you to play. Okay, I will leave the keyboard for a while and let you play with yours. Um, a little exercise on data modification. Okay, for the first exercise, create a table in Transac SQL named student uh, with three columns. Okay. You do it uh, on Transact SQL to improve your way of writing writing the Transact SQL. Okay, uh, please please play the game. Create a table with this three column. Okay, the first column in uh, with the name in varchar two hundred. The second column with first name in char ten, and the last column in age in it int um, is for numbers i will explain you uh, that in in the uh, next section uh, question two comes uh, comes right after this video i advise you first to put in pause the video to answer the exercise and then to answer the question two Okay, so let's go. I wish you good luck and learn well Transact SQL. Okay, see you soon. Exercise to <coughs> insert five rows, you must have these five values in this table. Okay, the first row contains Michael Jackson with the age of 18. The second line contains um, uh, Liz Taylor, Taylor Liz, with the age of 16. Third line contains Grass Kelly, with the age of 17 years old. Uh, fourth line, Clint Eastwood, my friend, with the age of 23. And the last one, Willis Bruce, uh, with the age of 22. Okay? So, you need to have these values in this table. Good luck. Exercise 3. You have to select the student called Clint. Okay? Good luck. Exercise 4. Update the age of Clint to 20. Finally, exercise 5, delete from the table the student name Bruce Willis. Okay, it's the last question and good luck. Let's correct the exercise. Creation of the student table with three columns. One call name with the Vachar 200, the other call first name and with the Enchar 10 and the last containing the age in it. Okay, so we do create table as I told you in the previous session. Create table, create at table with the name of the table, student and parenthesis name 
name, you can see here that uh, name is the reservoir world on SQL. Okay, as I told you in the previous demo, it's better to use the scar bucket. Okay, so to scar bucket name with the type of the column, Varsha to Anden, comma, uh, first name, Shouten, and sorry, a little error, and uh, age in it. Okay, let's execute this query. Now we will create the table with three columns. Uh, and we, if we do a refresh at the top left on the table, we can see that the table student appears. Okay? That's the correction on the Exercise one. Okay, exercise two. So I am not going to retype the whole script because uh, it's going to take uh, much time. So uh, I've left you the insert into student. Okay, we insert the following values in the student table uh, Jackson, Michael, 18, and so on. Okay. Uh, I hope you have understood the importance of the order in the insertion in the table. So if I insert the value Michael uh, first, just here, it will be saved in the name column. Okay, understood? And I put the value Michael which will be saved in the first name column and at the end I put the age which will be inserted in the age column. Okay? So let's go. Let's execute this query. Five row affected and what will the select give? We have our fantastic five rows in our student Table, Jackson, Michael, and uh, so on. Bruce Willis, uh, Clint Eastwood. Okay? So let's go for the next corrected exercise. Exercise 3. Exercise 3, you have to select the student called Clint. Okay. Let's go. Next, right. For query, select asterisk from student where, where first name, because Kids is in the first name column, first name equal Clint, like we've got. Okay? So execute this query, execute, and we have we found Clint Eastwood. Okay. So in this demonstration, we use the where clause to filter data in the where clause. Exercise four: update the age of Clint to twenty-four. Okay. So. Let's write the query. Update with the name of the table. Update students set the age age equal 24 where first name okay. equal quit okay let's execute this query we can see before the update that the good age is 23. Let's execute this query. You can see one row affected. And if we do 
what does the select give for our student table? We have the work clause to filter the data. We can we can see that the age 24 has been updated. Okay, that's the correction about the exercise four. Exercise five delete from the table where the student name is Bruce Willis, my whole friend. Okay, let's type the script delete from the name of the table student where uh, name. Cut and Bruce. Okay, execute this query. One more affected, and what does the select give? Normally, now we have just forward because we have deleted the first name Bruce. Okay. Forwards, okay, Jackson 5, and we can say goodbye to Bruce in this video, okay? So this is the end of all exercises. Uh, I hope that it was, it was not very difficult. So let's go to the, uh, to the next section. Okay, a focus on the three previous sessions. For the moment, we have uh, database okay and we have a table with data in it okay with michael jackson Liz Taylor, Grass Kelly, all my friends in are in this table uh, we also learned uh, how to select data with the select update data with the update insert data with the insert delete the data with the delete and filter data with the where clause okay and and that's good for now so so what we are going to do next we are going uh, to do a little more transact sql to improve our queries we're gonna see to that we can Deepen our knowledge of transact SQL by adding a lot of clothes like hand and how the light the distinct select into order by and so on. Okay, so let's go together to the next section. Okay, here we go. Now we will learn to deepen how to transact SQL. We learned how to select data, update them, insert them. We played with the where filter and we also learned how to delete data. And now, now we are going to go further in transact SQL and we gonna to deepen how now knowledge, shall we, about the transact SQL. Okay, uh, so we will go step by step, and first of all, we are we gonna see uh, the alias in the columns. So how do the alias works? It's pretty simple. You have to know that we can rename a column in the select by, uh, by uh, uh, an alias using the has clause. Okay. So let's go. Don't forget to use your database function as always. And we are going uh, to create a table that we are going to work with the rest of the course. Uh, depending in the Transact SQL, we be done on the contact table. Don't be afraid, the table uh, where I will 
insert multiple values is attached in the course. So you won't have to retype the whole lines in this script. Okay? All my friend is here. Michael Jackson, Bruce Willis, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Angelina, Angelina Jolie, and me. Tu es Olivier, je suis Olivier, Sharon Stone, and so on. Ok, let's execute the create table and insert the, all the data. Ok, fifth runs affected. What does the select give? Select asterisk from contact. We are we have got all the lines, the 15 rows. Okay. Now we are good. So we are going to work with this table until the end of the transact SQL course. First, we are talking about the alias in uh, of the column. So select. Zoom. Select name as with the alias as nickname from my table. Okay, let's call our uh, column name as nickname. Okay, the syntax, as you can see, is very simple. Okay, so let's execute execute this query and you can see you can see that the column um, name just there has been changed to nickname okay so can I rename all the columns of course you you can so let's make a zoom so in this example select name as nickname first name as superman age um, as spiderman gender as batman okay and date of birth as york uh, if i run this query you can see that all the colon have been changed nickname superman spiderman batman and Hulk. Hulk. okay Hulk in French. <laughs> okay, so you can see that it's pretty simple to uh, to put the as the alias in a query on Transact SQL. So that's it. That was the alias of columns part. And we go to the next section. Okay, here we go. Now we will learn to deepen how Transact SQL. We learned how to select data, update them, insert them. We played with the where filter and we also learned how to delete data. And now, now we are going to go further in Transact SQL and we gonna to deepen how now knowledge shall we about the Transact SQL. Okay. Uh, so we will go step by step and first of all we are we gonna see uh, the alias in the columns so how do the alias works it's pretty simple you have to know that we can rename a column in the select by, uh, by uh, uh, an alias using the has clause okay so let's go. Don't forget to use your database formation as always. And we are going uh, to create a table that we are going to work with the rest of the course. Uh, depending in the Transact SQL, we be done on the contact table. Don't be afraid, the table the where I will insert multiple values is attached in the course so you won't have to retype the whole lines in this script okay all my friend is here michael jackson bruce willis marilyn monroe uh, 
Angelina, Angelina Jolie and me. Tu dis Olivier, je suis Olivier, Sharon Stone and so on. Ok, let's execute the creatable and insert the, all the data. Ok. 50 rounds affected. And what does the select give? Select asterisk from contact. We are, we have got all the lines, the 15 rows. Okay. Now we are good. So we are going to work with this table until the end of the Transact SQL course. First, we are talking about the alias in uh, of the column. So select zoom select name as with the alias as nickname from my table okay let's call how uh, column name as nickname okay the syntax as you can see is very simple okay so let's execute execute this query and you can see you can see that the column um, name just there has been changed to nickname okay so can I rename all the columns of course you you can so let's make a zoom so in this example select name as nickname first name as superman age um, as spiderman gender as batman okay and date of birth as york uh, if i run this query you can see that all the column have been changed nickname superman spiderman batman and Hulk. Hulk. okay Hulk in French. <laughs> okay, so you can see that it's pretty simple to uh, to put the as the alias in the query on Transact SQL. So that's it. That was the alias of columns part, and we go to the next section. The lag. We are going to uh, talk about the lag because it's a very interesting function uh, because it allows us to refine the filter search that uh, we can have with the where so we can with the where assign a like to it okay um, the syntax of the like i want for example to search um, in the name column, all the names where there is the uh, letter O. Okay. If we put where equal O, if there are no values equal to O, the where won't give us anything. Okay. But with the like, if we do select a name from contact where name like percent or percent here this specificity will hello uh, hit to search in the name column that has the row okay percent or percent will search in all rows of the anti name column all names that have the row okay it's a special request request sorry but you can do it with the like so what does the like give you see here in the contact table that all these names uh, have the letter u o oh, sorry okay all name with the letter it can be interesting in some cases. There are a lot of other specificities on the leg. Okay, we will see in the in the demonstration right now. Let's 
go for the line. We're gonna select, uh, do a select on the contact table. We have our 15 values that are in the table. Okay, 15. As I'll show you in the previous demo for the table contact. The lact. Uh, first of all, can work as a where. Okay, you can see here the first select with the equal where name equal DiCaprio and just below select a name from contact where name like DiCaprio. Okay, and if we take both values, it's the same result for this of these two query, okay, DiCaprio and DiCaprio. So we can replace the equal by a like, okay. But with the like, we can do much more interesting things. Let me show you an example. If, for example, I want all the edge that start with a two, you see this syntax. I put two and just after the two, the percent. Okay, let's execute this query. You see here the age with 23, 22, 22, 22, 28 and 22. What if I don't put the like and I put an equal instead? We replace the like with two. There is nothing. We don't have in our color an edge that corresponds to two. Okay? That's the difference between the like and the equal. A contrary case, if, uh, if I want the edge ending with two. Instead of putting the percentage after, we will put uh, it percent before and we have four result 22 22 22 and 22 so that's the difference between the percent after two and percent before okay in this case is the all the hedge ending at two with the percent just before the two and with this example the percent after the two, it's for the hedge that start with two. Okay. What if I want all the names that have the letter I in them? Okay. Uh, so in this example, as I show you in the demo, when you put two percent in the string following by the code, it will take all the values where there is the letter high in the column. Okay, I'm going to play this query. And you can see that there are seven, uh, seven person in my table that are uh, the E in the name, the column name. Willis, DiCaprio, Pete, Jolie, and so on. Okay. So uh, as you can see, it's very uh, interesting function. It uh, really allow you to refine new search contrary to the way. Okay. F uh, next next example. So we, if I want to uh, to find the names with the letter N. Let's execute this query, and we have four four result. Jackson, Crone, Mono, and Stone. You can see that it works uh, very well. And what if I want all the days, uh, all the date of birth where E ver where there is, sorry, and an zero eight. So there. Okay, select asterisk from contact where date of birth like zero. Percent zero eight percent. Let's 
click discovery and we can see there is nine there are nine results with the uh, zero weight zero weight zero weight and so on so it works very well for information if we put brackets you can take several values that look similar when we put two string in the bracket okay i'm going to show you the result to make it easier for you uh, you see i have in the name colon tuilier and chuyer just here chuyer and tuilier and chuyer we just the t and c that change okay i put here t and c it means take t and c follow it by v okay so you see sql is matter with a like function it took uh, those, those two characters and found and found tuilier and chuilier in the result okay tuilier and chuilier um, you will rarely see but uh, it but it was just uh, to show you that it's possible to refine your search for a specific request like this one so there you are v those were the specifics of the like it's much more powerful than the the where okay and it will allow you to refine you research come on let's go to the next session okay it's your turn we gonna to start the first part of the transact sql exercise i have 11 questions for you the goal of the game is not to cheat like in school so try to learn on your how it will be it will be much more interesting for you and that's how you will you will you will improve quickly and efficiently okay so the first question it's remove duplicate on the in the age column Exercise 7. Select the date of birth starting with 1976 by remaining the date of birth column with here 1970-76. Okay. Exercise 8. Select the people who were born on January. First. Exercise 9. Select the first name that end with the letter E. Exercise 10. A query that just take out a um, woman in two different ways. Exercise 11. Select in the query people who are 17 years old and less. Exercise 12. Select just people who are not 17 or and 38 years old. Exercise 13. Take just the first seven rows of the table. Exercise 14. Copy just the line from Leonardo DiCaprio to an another table called um, Contact Leonardo. Okay, in the next two exercises, we will see two new functions for the dates, which are year and month. Um, the goal uh, is that you do some research on the internet and find the answer to the following two questions. 
So the question is select just the people who were not born in 1976 and for the answer think about the year function. Exercise 16 just select people who were not born in August. Think about the month, the month function in this exercise. Let's go to the Transact SQL part one answer key. I hope it went uh, well for you. It's true that the exercise was more difficult than at the beginning, but step by step you start to improve in Transact SQL so the query are getting longer and longer. So if you have more and more years in writing your queries, that means that there is an improvement of on your side and that's very good. Okay? If you didn't find the answer to the question, I will give you uh, them to you right away. That's the purpose of the question. Okay, so let's go for the first question. Remove, duplicate in the edge column. Okay. If I'm running the select for contact without the distinct, because for remove duplicate, we use the distinct. Uh, we can see, we can see that there are the edge 41, who's, uh, which appears two, twice, and uh, 22, four, four times. Okay. And if I'm running the distinct, you can see that the edge 41 appears only once. Okay. And also for the 22 edge. Select distinct for remove duplicates so let's we move on second question select the dates of birth starting by with 1976 by remaining the date of birth okay let's make a zoom select with the date of birth column with the alias as the name of the alias Okay. By starting, so starting with the lag and starting at the end we had a percent. Okay. With a lag. This there is the correction of the exercise seven. Let's execute the query and you can see that we are free result for the uh, the one thousand nine hundred and seventy six. Okay, so let's go to the exercise 8. Select the people who were born on January 1st. Select from my contact and where the top of like percent 01 percent. Okay, so 01 uh, dash 01 correspond to the January 1st. I have, and if I run this query i have one person in my query it's george Clooney, who was born on january 1st okay and if i do make first february there is there's no one so we have someone uh, we don't have someone sorry who was born on february 1st Okay, exercise 9, select the first name that end with the letter E. Okay, select from contact where first name, percent, at the end we had the E. Okay, that's the correction for the exercise 9. And if I'm running this query, we are four result. First name with Busk. Okay, that's end. With he, George, Bruce, and Natalie. Exercise 10. A query that just take out women in two different ways. Okay, so select 
for the first query, nothing. And with the uh, sign greater or uh, lower, different. With the parenthesis in the two query. And mal. Okay? Mal. If I run this query, we have the same result. Jackson and at the end, Portman Natalie. Okay? Okay, exercise 11. Select in the query the people who are 70 years old and under. under. Okay? Under with the sign and equal 70 with the edge. Okay? That's the correction for exercise 11. And if I want this query, I have two results. This tailor with 16 years old and Gwas Kelly with 17 because we we uh, write a equal if i remove the equal i have i think you understand just one result this tailor for 16 years old let's go for the exercise 12 select the people who are not 17 and 40 head 40 head years old Here, must have nothing. Select one with age nothing and the value 17 and 48. Okay, and let's play this query. We have all the age except 17 and 48 in my result. Okay, and If I remove the not, it's just the in. We have Grass Kelly and Marilyn Mono for the 48 years old. Exercise 13 takes just the first seven rows of the table. First, top seven asterisks from all the columns. Let's execute this query and we have only seven rows which appears. And if, for example, I change the seven by the five, you under, I think you understand, it just the, it's just until one, until the five rows. Okay? Exercise. 14. So select, copy just the line from Leonardo DiCaprio to another table called Contact Leonardo. So select into my new table, Contact Leonardo, from my main table, Contact, with just one value, where first name equal Leonardo. Okay? Let's execute this query. Just one more affected. I think you understand. Select Etoile from Contact Leonardo. And we can see that you have just one row for Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay? Exercise 15. Select just the people who were not born in 1976. I hope you have found the answer on the internet regarding here. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. I will explain it to you now. The purpose of the exercise, exercise sorry, was to learn a new function while duly doing it in an exercise. So, here, just here. Okay? With the Uh, the colon into two parentheses and different, not in on the whole school. Uh, so if I'm running this query, you can see that um, 1976 doesn't appear in the uh, date of birth column. Okay? 
can also remove this old school and write in this way. It's the same result. 12 rows. Okay? And last question. Select just the person who were not born in, in August. Okay? So, the only difference is that we put month instead of year. Okay? And, and when in this query, we have seven or seven person who was not born, born in the in August month. Okay? And if I'm running the second query, it's exactly the same result. The result is identical. So here the answer came for the course. I hope you have learned a lot. Now we are going to start uh, the section two, Transact SQL part two. And we are going to see even more interesting things like the between, uh, the hand, the half, the sum, the mean, the max, the count, and so on. Uh, where we are going, you are, you are going <laughs> to learn a lot more and that's very good. So let's go together to the part two.
sum and count. What does sum, the sum, aggregation function allows to calculate? Uh, like min and max, the total sum of the column containing just numeric values. Okay? The count, the count will count all the rows of the column for all types, all types, sorry, uh, of columns. It also takes the column of character types, char, vachar, and so on. And it also counts the numeric column. Okay? So, first example, select count me the number of lines of rows in the open table. So, select count asterisk with parentheses from contact. Okay? Let's execute this query and we have in the table 16 rows. Okay? The select count, win count, all the lines in the table. So is it good? It's good because we have 16 rows in our table with Natalie Portman. Okay? What if I put a colon name in the count? So we can add a colon inside the parentheses. In this example, it's name. Okay? Select count name from contact. We have 16 rows. The name, it, it doesn't change. We can also filter. Why don't we count the rows that don't have null values? Okay, so in this example, select count asterisk from my table where date of birth is not null. And in this query, is this example, now we have 15 rows because we have just one row with a null value. You can also add a distinct uh, to the count, okay? For example, if I do select from a contact order by first name, we have Olive with the duplicate and Booth, okay? So I have a duplicate values, I have two Olivier and two Booth in my table. So the query is Sect count distinct. You had the distinct into the parentheses with the column name to to distinct. Okay. So what does the cell give? Fourteen. Okay. Logically, it will return forty rows to me because I have. 16 roll less 2 duplicate equal 40. The account is good. So we move to the sum. So first example, can I do a sum uh, asterisk into its parentheses? Can I do? Can I put an asterisk? It's impossible. In case syntax near the asterisk. Okay, the star. Okay, and the name column. If we add the name column, the sum name column, sum name from contact. It doesn't work. The operand, operand data type Vasha is invalid for sum operator. We cannot do a sum on the character column, but the count, the count can do it, okay? Sum works only on numeric columns. And in on the edge column, it's work. It made the sum of all the edge in the contact table, okay? 
So the sum is 463. I do a select to better understand. It made the sum all all this age, 18, 16, and so on. Okay, and the sum in 463. We can get around the count, the count problem if we do the sum one. What is the sum going to do? It's going to calculate the number of flow in the contact table. It's going to add up all the columns in the contact table. There are 16 rows there. We can do a sum one. If we do a sum two, logically, it gives me 32 rows and so on. Okay? We can also calculate the total age of women in, my, in the query. Select sum with the age from contact where gender equal female. Okay, so execute this query and we have 157 years. Okay, so this is the main difference between sum and count. You will see them very often in your SQL query. So you have to understand that count means to count and sum means the total. Okay. So let's go for the next session. Print. Print is used to return a user defined message to the client. Okay, it's handy for tracking. Uh, for example, if you have one million rows to do on your table, you can split this one million row in session into batch of one hundred thousand rows for example okay so uh, you can follow what you do during a large batch of transact sql in insertion for example so let's go this and uh, see in a demonstration select uh, we use our usual database the select with the print okay print cut and the message inside inside the print okay select from my table and print just underneath okay i take the whole request and execute this query and uh, if i go to the message message tab okay i get the select from my table print okay so here I print the message that i previously put in my print uh, this can be also very uh, be very useful in uh, in case of many insertion here i do uh, an insertion of two rows i insert First, my first line for John Wayne, and my second rows here for Michael Douglas. Okay? Followed by two print the first print and the second print. I can select uh, everything one by one, but so, so to go as fast as possible. I'm going to insert the two rows in a row and I, I am also going to put the two print in my query. Okay, so let's go. Insert and insert the uh, and let's take the two point. Here we see that uh, we have a good follow up of the insertion that have been made on the contact table print insertion the first line john wayne okay and insertion the second line douglas michael 
Okay. It's perfect. So the print, I use it from time to time when I do a big, big update on SQL Server for an update, for a delete, and so on. Okay? Uh, it happens to me to do a big deletion of 10 million or 20 million rows. So I divide, I divide uh, them in batches. Which each batch deleted, I put a print to know where I am in my query. It's quite practical to track the evolution of your query. That was the main in advantage of print. Okay, so let's go for the next session. Small focus on everything we have seen since the beginning of the training to remember what we have seen. We learned how to select uh, data with the select, update some data with the update, delete them with the delete, and insert data with the insert. We also filtered the data with the where and also with having. That is applied with the aggregation function such as sum and, uh, and so on. Okay? Talking about the aggregation function, remember that the count allows us to count the row. Sum gives us the sum, average gives us the average of the column. Mean gives us the minimum and max for the maximum value in the column. We also dealt with the AND and OR operator, which have in the data intervals with the between, uh, we put the data with the compile, the print command to print what we did at Transact SQL, and select a number of rows with the dump, and frankly, it's not bad. We have greatly expanded our skills on SQL by approaching remaining uh, of columns with the has command for highest. We refined uh, our search with the like, the subtitle, like, removed, removed sorry, duplicates with the distinct, copied a table with the search into the different comparison operators like return, equal, and so on, the operator in nothing is and is not null for null value, and sort the data with the order by in an ascending or descending way. So what are we going to go to do next? A full chapter, a very important chapter on the join, inner join, left join, uh, full outer join, uh, except and intersect, the int in the join, and so on. Okay? Uh, following eight exercises on the join, and also we gonna see the offset, fetch next row, the choose, the if, the case when, and so on. Just think about how far you have come since you first select in our first section on Transac SQL. Okay? So, so just now that you have taken a lot of things and this is very, and this frankly is good. Okay? So come on and let's move on to the next section. It's your turn for this question. We will approach everything we saw in the section. Okay, so come on to use cables. Exercise 17. Um, count the number of rows concerning those wheels, my friend. Exercise 18. Add up the number of women who were born in 1983. 
Ok? Exercise 19. Count the number of women between the age of 20 and 45 whose number is greater than 1 by ranking the age in descending order. Exercise 20. Count the separate rows in the gender column. Exercise 21. Insert two lines in the contact table. A first line for Malone Brando, uh, with 33 years old, man born in this date. Okay. And a second line, Mary, Mrs. Strip, Mary, uh, 26, sorry. Years old, female, born in this date, and print the results as follow. Okay, one row affected insertion of Malone Brando, okay, uh, and just underneath the insertion of Strip Mary, okay. Good luck. Exercise 20. To select people who are not between 20 and 27 years old. Exercise 23. Count the people who have the letter B in their first name, who are between 18 and 40 years old, male, male, and whose uh, total, total is greater than one. Exercise 24, write me the request to get this result for Grace and Pete. I want the same result and just write me the good request. Okay, good luck. Exercise 25, can you um, correct me this request? When I'm running this query, I have many uh, syntax, incorrect syntax, near the keyword and, and hover errors. So, please help me to correct this request. Okay, let's go for the correction of the exercise. I hope you have passed your exercise. Uh, I admit that here were some questions that were not very simple. But that was the, the goal, to progress together with the Transact SQL part 2. So exercise 17, count me the number of rows concerning rows release. Okay, let's make a zoom, select count uh, with the asterisk or star as total with the alias from contact where first name equal rows. Okay. Nothing complicated for the moment. If we run the select, we have two rows. We have two rows. Okay? And we, if we check, select with the contact where first name is rows, we have, we have got two rows. Okay? Next, 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 sorry, exercise, exercise 18, add, add up. The number of women who were born in uh, 1983. Okay, we do select someone. Okay, with the function function here, and I play the query. We have five people. Okay. Okay, next exercise, exercise 19. This is a little more complicated. Uh, count the number of women between the age of 20 and 45 whose number is greater than one by working the age in descending order. Okay. So, count the number of women. Count. Okay, with gender and age. Uh, of 20 and 45, just where hedge between 20 and 45 yellow, years old, sorry, 
goodbye because we have the count just here greater than one so we had avid count no choice for to 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 have this query to have this result having count order the hedge in descending order with the order by age age desk okay and if we were running this query we have three rows with two genders with the age of 41 two genders with 34 and so on okay and four just below exercise 20 count count the separate rows in the gender column let's so to count the separate row it's select count with the distinct inside the count we can we can write the distinct uh, inside account distinct with the name of the column gender from contact okay so here we are two because here is for male and female okay exercise 21 insert two lines two rows in the contact table and print the result okay let's play the two queries together insert contact Marlon Bando and for the first print insertion of Marlon Bando and for the second insertion insertion of strip Mary let's execute this true query and we have the to print insertion of Marlon Bondo OK and insertion of strip Merrill OK exercise 22 select people who are not between 20 and 27 years old OK so select from the where age not between 20 and 27 OK and if you want this query, we have 14 rows. Okay. So, exercise 23. Could the people who have the letter B in their first name or are between 20, uh, 18 and 40 years old, male, and whose, uh, whose total is greater than one? I go with you uh, completely and I accept that it's it, uh, it perfectly sorry it's a weird question uh, it was to improve you in the transact SQL okay so in this query it's selling count okay count the people who have the letter B like B and the edge between 20 and 40 and edge 20 and 40 uh, and gender male group by because we have the count just here having count who the total is greater than one having count one okay and the answer was was Bruce Bruce Willis okay Question, uh, exercise sorry 24 uh, worked with your request to get this result okay select name from contact where name equal grace or or is the or name equal equal pit okay i use the or because the value is in the same column if i use the hand it doesn't work because is not in the same color okay and the last exercise exercise 25 commit correct me this request i think uh, you have succeeded in answering this question here the answers i could huh? see if i want to be sorry i have this result okay six rows okay so 
I hope it was not uh, it was not too hard for you. Uh, the goal was to learn to remember well the second part of Transact SQL. Okay. Now we are going to to see the join in the next section. Before we are going to see the focus. A focus on everything you have, we have seen since the beginning. It always feels good to remember what we saw. Okay? So come on, let's go for the next section. The joints. Joints are commands that you will see very frequently in SQL query. Okay? Uh, you must absolutely know the joints when you are going to set up your first likely more complex query. Discover the power of a join and how easy it is to install. You will realize that it's not that complex to write join on SQL Server. Okay? They are designed to put two or more tables together to search for answer to question. Okay? Uh, a join does make it's possible to combine the column of several tables. Think of your database as a huge puzzle. Okay? So each table is a separate piece. So our job is to put all these pieces this space to together. You have to learn inner join, full join, left join, and right join, and so on to put this piece of the puzzle together. Okay? You can see here an example of the join in this diagram. Join I use to combine a table of or several tables. This, this is the correspondence between the two tables on the four, and here the result that a join between two tables. So let's go for the first demonstration for the inner join. The joints. Joints are commands that you will see very frequently in SQL query. Okay? Uh, you must absolutely know the joints when you are going to set up your first likely more complex query. Discover the power of a join and how easy it is to install. You will realize that it's not that complex to write join on SQL Server. Okay? They are designed to put two or more tables together to search for answer to question. Okay? Uh, a join does make it's possible to combine the column of several tables. Think of your database as a huge puzzle. Okay? So each table is a separate piece. So our job is to put all these pieces this space to together. You have to learn inner join, full join, left join, and right join, and so on to put this piece of the puzzle together. Okay? You can see here an example of the join in this diagram. Join I use to combine a table of or several tables. This, this is the correspondence between the two tables on the four, and here the result that a join between two tables. So let's go for the first demonstration for the inner join. The join. It's possible to join two tables between them in SQL Server. Okay? The joins allow to associate many tables in the same query. They allow you to obtain results that combine data uh, from several tables in an efficient and very powerful way. 
Uh, John, I used a lot of a lot of ant on the screen server. You will see that it's very useful to join table. The syntax is easy, uh, and you can see that there are many types of join. There is the inner join. Inner join, in fact, it's an internal join to return records when the condition is true in both tables. It's one of the most used join. It's the one you will see the most often. With the inner join, if you have two tables, left table and right table, that we are going to join, it's going to join the matching data between the two tables. Okay? Anyway, we are going to see this in the demonstration. The syntax, the syntax is select with the customer colon alias A. Okay. By making the join on the customer table alias B and at the end by specifying the two columns on which I want to join. Okay, so come on, let's see all this in the demonstration. Okay, so let's go for the demonstration about the inner join, the internal join. Use formation as usual, and I create two tables. One table called orders, and one table with the name of customer. It's good and insert some values in them. Insert nine rows and insert our in, into the table customer how five customer. And if I do the two select, we have the two table, a customer table, and the holders table. So what we are going to do, we are going to join these two tables. This one, the table order, and the table on the bottom, the table customers. So my first question is going to be, I want to bring back the customer who have a order number. Okay, let's make a zoom. You can see here who has order. Okay, number of Okay, uh, their number, and I want to, to join them with the five customers just on the bottom. Okay, and I want to show you just the customer who have made an order. So, logically, we, if we do a join, we going to uh, show the matching values. So, we will have the one, just here in the ID customer colon, the three, and the five. Okay? So, there we have another number here. Okay? So, say, let's write our query. Okay. Let's go select. So, ID customer, because we want to do a join on this column, so ID customer from orders, okay, and we gave we give an alias to the table, so A for example, and we also give a alias for the ID customer for this table. In our join, let's do a join between the two tables on the customer. I think you understand. We give an alias B to the another table, the table customer, and I do a join on the two colon ID customer. So, A 
a i x a equal b i d custom so in this example i do a join on a id customer in this in the order table a and the handover handover join on the b id customer for the customer table just right here okay if i want to see if my syntax is good just click on the check here parse check and command completed successfully so what does the select let's run this query i did bring back customers one three and five i've i've joined the two tables and i have got the associated order numbers okay so we have the customer that had that, had, that have sorry order numbers then I want the first and last name of the people with in my query. So let's make a zoom. We had the column name with the first name column. The first name column, sorry. I put the alias B because the column name and first name belong to the customer table. Okay, understood? Let's run this query. I have the name, the first name, and the number, the number of the number of order, sorry, which appears in my query. Okay? Everything is perfect. And then if I change the first name, if for example I put a hey, okay, and if you can see here that it's red, and if I run this query, invalid column name uh, for the first name, okay, so I don't have the first name column in the customer, in the order table, okay. Then you have to know that the inner uh, in the inner join is option. If I take the same request and remove the inner, okay, just a join without the inner, and, and if I want the query, the result is good. Okay, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same command. So inner is optional, but generally developers like to put an inner by default, but it's optional. You have to know that. So contrary to a popular belief, we had a lot of posts on the forum about SQL that talk about uh, impacting when join data on themselves where we join. So if in the Apple, if uh, we change the joining order on this query I, uh, a id customer equal b and if we change okay b and he just here i invert the meaning of the colon in the join so what's going on if we run this two query is exactly the same thing the same rules okay in short, changing the order of joy does not, not impact the result of your request. Okay, so let's go for the right and left join demonstration. The left join. The left join is an external join to return all records from the left table with the corresponding values from the right table. Okay, to better understand its schema it is by this drawing. Okay, we take all the values from the left table with the 
corresponding values from the right table. But, but we don't take the values from the right table. Okay? So you see in the syntax that instead of putting a linear join, we put a legend. With the legend, we can do a is new filter. Okay, what it uh, what is this is new filter? The is new filter on the left join will bring back all the lines, all the rows in the left table, but that doesn't match the right table. So what it look like in the drawing? So we will we bring back just the value of the left table and at the end we put where on the right column a id customer for example is new okay so it will just bring back the values of the left table it will filter them same thing for the right job it's an external join to return all the records from the right table with the corresponding value from the left table Syntactically, as you can see, we remove left and put the right join, and it returns the right values uh, that correspond with the left ones. Okay, with the is null filter, it's the same thing back uh, as the left join. We are going to bring back just the rows. Uh, from the right table, which has no match with the left table, like this. Okay? So, without the intersection of table uh, and table B, which is the right, the left table. Okay? Okay, let's go for the demonstration of left and right join. We do a select of the Holders and customer table, and we have always the same, the same data. Okay. Uh, the question is which customer is not attached to uh, customer ID in the holder table. Here we have the customer Albert Einstein and Chuck Norris. Uh, but the customer ID is 12 and 13 and at uh, our not reference in the order table. Okay, there is not associated order number and we want to know how to find the 12 and 13 in the query. We won't be able to do uh, an inner join because as you have seen before, it will only output the correspondence between the two tables. So we will try to find the way to uh, to output the just the 12 and 13. Okay, uh, we said to ourselves in this case we are going to do either a left or a right join. Why uh, in first uh, do a left join at the beginning? As you can see, we replace the in enjoy by just a left join okay and if i run this query here so what sql did it took the matches from the customer table here okay for one three and five here that match with the order table order table okay and plus the values 12 and 13 okay so it's normal to have one three five uh, 12 and 13 okay so in this case we are obliged to have the filter that it's to say we are uh, obliged to filter the data and we are going to tell him Take just the values corresponding to the left table. Okay, so here we take just the left join from the left table with no correspondence on the table customer, the table 
B, with no value from the back table and the B value and the correspondence, correspondence sorry, that is with. In this case, I have to add the null. So I do a select and I add where a id customer, a id customer is null for filter the data. Let's run this query and I have 12 and 30 Albert Einstein and Chuck Norris. It works perfect. So there I have the answer of to my question, which client is not attached to an ID client in the order table. Okay. We can also uh, see that the router join just here is optional. Okay. If I put an outer here, it's exactly the same result in some query you will see uh, the outer. Okay, it's optional. You can also do the same thing with the right join. Just reverse the customer and the order table. Okay, we change. Customer is now on the right and order is on the left. We reverse the two tables. We put the customer B in the right join. That means add the join on the right side of the customer table. And if I run the select, it's the same result. Okay? Uh, it's the same thing. Right join, left join. And we can also say that the outer right join is exactly the same out uh, as the router left join. It's optional. Okay? So you see the power of the join. How far can we go on uh, the data filter with the is new filter? We can go very far, so it is very powerful. Okay? So come on, let's go to the next demonstration. Full outer join. Using these commands allow, allows you to combine the result of both tables. It allows you to associate them with each other uh, thanks to the con uh, to a condition, sorry, to and to file with null values if the condition is not respected. Concretely, uh, the full join returns all the lines, and if there is no match, it shows a null. It even returns the matching rows, the matching lines. With the is null filter on the full outer join, it will bring back all the rows of the table A and B. But it's important, not the data that match between them. It's like the left and the right job. If we put is null, it doesn't bring back the matching values. Okay? So let's go together to the demonstration. Okay, so let's go for the full outer join demonstration. And now it's time to the full auto join with the, with both select at the same time. We will take the ID client colon ID customer sorry from and we will put a full auto join on the customer table and run the both select at the same time to see what it gives. So run this query. And so what's happened? For the full auto join, just here. So I brought all the rows from nine to four, from one to nine, just here. 
let's make a zoom. One, two, nine. From the orders, orders table plus the two rows from the customer table just here for the 12 and 13 rows okay so we are we have 11 rows for the full autogen request query so we can see that it broke all the corresponding rows the one the three the five and so on on the other hand they are two null because the 12 and the 13 are not corresponding so it give, it give us the null value as i explained uh, earlier okay so it brings back all the rows and the ones that don't match are shown with the null but is still bring back the name okay so it matches it matches sorry that in this jgram so it broke back all the lines from both table plus the matching value between the two table okay and what it have changed colon i put in the place of id customer here b id customer here b id customer okay I pre query with the to select and what does the select give? Just it broke, broke back all the lines one, three, five, twelve, and thirteen plus many null. Okay. So it put back for, for sorry one here three five and twelve and thirteen. So he book back the one two three from the common table, but not two four six. There are no values, so it shows a null. Okay? So we are going to filter on the isNull. Okay? You can see that here that all the rows on the client table, okay, the customer table, sorry, uh, we see that five null corresponding to the order table, two, four, six, eight, and nine. Okay? So that you understand better i'm going to do a select with the, the tool select and the full autogen with the hey id customer is new okay so let's run this query and the full auto join the full um, auto join book back the two lines 12 and 13 that are not in the order table okay is on the customer table but not in the order table with the filter filter is new so in the schematic that that's what it looks like here it broke back all the rows from uh, A and B, but it didn't bring back the ones that don't match between those uh, two tables. So it's normal that is brought back just the 12 and 13 that don't match that table. So a full autogen is very useful when you want when you want to see all the rows that don't match each other. Okay. Is the outer optional? I full I put full join, and you can see that it's it's uh, sorry, it's completely optional. Okay, if you want this query, you have the same result: twelve and thirteen. 
Okay? That was the demonstration on, uh, on the full auto zone. You can see that it's very powerful. Okay, let's so let's go for the next demonstration. The cross join. The cross join is none other than the Cartesian product of two tables. The Cartesian Cartesian product on SQL of two sets. It is a generalized multiplication. Okay, if for example we have two tables, it will associate the row of the first table to the second one. This is something we rarely see, but in some cases we may need it and it exists on SQL. We can associate the row from the first table to the second line, bring everything together. The syntax is quite simple. It's a join on one column. Okay, it's a cross join on one table. Uh, one table. The syntax is select from customer B cross join on the another table, the order table. Okay, so come on and let's see this in a demonstration. Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the cross join use formation as. Usual, I do a select from of my two tables and I still have the same data okay for the two tables one to, to nine and my five favorite customers and here we go for the query here we go for the query we can see that in the cross join there is no join on two columns. We do a cross join on one table. Okay, we can also remove the alias they are used as on the cross join. We can remove it. Okay, and we will run the two select at the both time. So we see that. Uh, that in the code join we have <coughs> 45 rows. Okay. If you click on the code join, we have 45 rows. Okay. So why 45 rows? We realize that the first nine rows we have a order number that is reflected here. To from 3712 to 3238. Okay, it's reflected here. Okay, two. But it took uh, Bill Gates nine and replicated it nine times. Okay. Big gets nine times. Then he took the second value for Frank Sinatra. Okay, and replicated it from the uh, 3712 to uh, 3238. And so on for Michael Jordan and Albert Einstein, Chuck Norris, and so on. Okay, so it took the nine rows just here and multiply by them the five rows in the customer table, which make uh, 45 rows, hence the result. This is what we call a Cartesian project. What it did, it multiplied the rows of the first table in the second one and if we change the, the order, the join-in order, just here, we change customer and order tables, and we have exactly the, the, the number of rows, 45 rows, okay? 
So this is called a quotient. I'm going to multiply the number of rows between two tables or more. Okay? Uh, so come on, let's go for the next section. The cross join. The cross join is none other than the Cartesian product of two tables. The Cartesian Cartesian project on SQL of two sets it is a generalized multiplication. Okay, if for example we have two tables, it will associate the row of the first table to the second one. This is something we rarely see, but in some cases we may need it and it exists on SQL. We can associate the row from the first table to the second line, bring everything together. The syntax is quite simple. It's a join on one column. Okay, it's a cross join on one table. Uh, one table. The syntax is select from customer B, cross join on the another table, the order table. Okay? So, come on and let's see this in a demonstration. Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the cojon use formation. As usual, I do a select from of my two tables and I still have the same data. Okay, for the two tables, one, two, nine and my five favorite customers and here we go for the query here we go for the query we can see that in the cross join there is no join on two columns we do a cross join on one table okay we can also remove the alias they are used as on the cross join. We can remove it. Okay. And we will run the two select at the both time. So we see that, uh, that in the cross join we have <coughs> 45 rows. Okay. If you click on the cross join, we have 45 rows. Okay. So why 45 rows? We realize that the first nine rows, we have a order number that is reflected here. To from 3712 to 3238. Okay? It's reflected here. Okay, two. But it took uh, Bill Gates nine and replicated it nine times. Okay, Bill Gates nine times. Then it took the second value for Frank Sinatra. Okay, and replicated it from the uh, 3712 to uh, 3238 and so on for Michael Jordan and Albert Einstein, Chuck Norris and so on. Okay, so it took the nine rows just here and multiplied by them, the five rows in the customer table which make uh, 45 rows, hence the result. This is what we call a Cartesian project. What it did, it multiplied the rows of the first table in the second one, and if we change the, the order, the join-in order, just here, we change customer and order tables, and we have exactly the, the, the number of rows, 45 rows, okay? 
So this is called a conjoint. I'm going to multiply the number of rows between two tables or more. Okay? Uh, so come on, let's go for the next section. Cross and outer apply. Maybe you have seen them in a NSQL script and you didn't really understand the usefulness of this type of join. So we will take, we will talk about uh, them in this demonstration. Uh, cross apply is equivalent uh, to an internal join. Okay, like a Nina John. And height of is equal to a left join. Okay, uh, we are going to see in, in the script. And let's run the first query with the classic Nina John, as you, have, you saw before in the previous demonstration. A classic Nina join. <coughs> and we have three lines, three rows, okay? We get Frank Sinatra and Michael and I, my old friends. So let's go, let's have fun and write the cross apply um, query. So let's go, copy and paste. For. So select B, uh, ID customer, B name, B first name, from customer, for the moment there is no Nothing complicated, and let's write the close apply with open the parentheses, select from my second table order. Okay, let's copy and pass from orders, and we replace the home by a where close and we close the query with the parentheses. And don't forget the stars or the asterisks. And if you try to run this query, we have an incorrect syntax near the parentheses. Okay? To fix this problem, you have to put the A after the parentheses. It's what's called a derivable table okay of course we will see that later in this lesson don't panic and if you want this query it's good we have exactly the same request the same result sorry for the two queries okay one two three and one two three it's perfect so you can see that the cross apply is equal to a internal join, in fact. Okay? It's exactly the same thing for the left join. We are going to replace the cross by a with the outer. Okay? It's exactly the same query. So we replace the cross with by a outer. And if you run the left join and the outer apply in the same times with the hair for the derivative table, just here, not forget the he, you can change the he and put a b, for example, b or c. And if you run the both query, we have exactly the same result. One, two, three, four. 5, 12, and 13, and exactly the same query, just on the bottom. Okay? So we see that cross apply and outer apply have, are the same as left join and inner join. Are we limited to one join on only two tables? Fortunately, we can do join on several Table. Uh, luckily, it exists for a reason of simplicity, and fortunately, we are not limited to this level on SQL Server. Let me show you this. I always use the same database formation. Okay. And let's create a new table, loyalty card. Let's create 
Whatever. And insert some simple value. Yes. No. For 12 rows. Okay, it's done. And if I do uh, all three select, I have ID customer for the free table. Okay. ID customer here, here, and here. Okay. So that's for the setup. Um, question I want customers who have an order number but also who have a loyalty card. So the query for the customer who have an order number is this one. We already seen before we have three person. We get Sinatra Frank and Michael Jordan. All my old friends. But I don't know in this query, <coughs> sorry, who has a loyalty card in this table. So I have to add the loyalty card in my query. Okay, so let's add a new inner join. Okay, for loyalty card. Yes, C. Okay, on. B ID customer equal C customer ID customer sorry and I think you understand where C loyal equal yes okay and if by running this query, then by miracle we have only sorry only one person. Okay, Bill Gates. So in this dem demonstration, you can see that we can do many join on many tables. Okay, there is no limit on SQL Server for the join the number of join. So that's what that was the demonstration for Minitable. So let's go for the next section. Update with the join. Um, you can make a join in a, an update. I will show you uh, that use formation as always. I forget to use formation go. Okay, as usual. And let's create two simple tables for our demonstration. Table one, and insert just four rows, and insert a, and create a, another table. Table two, and insert also insert four rows. And let's run the two select and make a zoom. In this example, we are going to change the values uh, for the table two. We are, we are replace. We replace the value fifth and sixth uh, by third and four. Okay, because the value on the table two, on the table two are not good. Okay, so we are going to change two words. So we are going to change to update these two values. Okay. Um, when we do an update on the join, we hide the from. Okay. Because you have to tell it from which source you want to, to update the fields and have to uh, add the set. Okay. So let's go for the. Uh, the update on the join. So, update. So, I want to update the table two for change these two values. So, I change, I update this value, update this table, sorry, set column two. Okay, this one. I want to 
change this column. So I put the alias T1 because I show you just after column two from I think you understand table T1 table one T1 okay so here we update the column of the table from the first table onwards okay from my source table from my table one and let's make a join table two T2, yes, two. Oh, T1, column 1, equal T2, column 1. It's simple to, to write this query and to finish where T2, column 2. So, T2, column 2, so this one, in 3 and 4. Okay? So, I want to change these two values. And let's run this query. I have a neural message and change the column. It's not the good column. T2, column 1 and update the query and you can see that we have two rows affected okay and if i run the new select you can see that the values in the table 2 have been changed now we are we are going three third and four fourth okay so we see that it's not a very complicated syntax, but there are people who use cursors and all that follow to update uh, two fields when we don't have to do it. We can do a, do a join sorry, with a simple update. Left join versus not in versus not exist. A left join can be right turn in many ways, with not in and with not exist. Um, we will use function as, as usual, and we will see which client, which customer, sorry, is not attached to a naive customer, as we seen before, with the left join and the is new filter. Okay. So we can see that the that Albert Einstein and Chuck Norris are not attached to the customer table. Okay, we can also write in with the nothing. Okay, Let's copy. with nothing is very simple. You will see it's not very difficult to write the script. We we uh, remove the alias from customer, okay? Where ID customer, where ID customer, not in parenthesis, select ID customer from orders. And we close with the parentheses to close the query. And if I run this query, you see that we call a subquery, okay? With a not in, give the same result. We don't need alias. We have to do a sub request with not in, okay? Of course, we will see the subquery later in this course. Uh, in not exist is a bit different. In uh, not exist, we will put an alias on each column. Okay, so copy and paste. 
the query. So here we had where not exist. Okay. Open report is and say dot asterisk from holders with a yes hey where b id customer equal a id customer and we close the parentheses. It's one discovery we have. Again, the same result. Okay. So we can see that we have three ways to write a ledger. Just out of curiosity, let's see the execution plan. Execution plan is here. You have to click on this button. The execution plan is how SQL broke back the data? What path did it take for the data? Okay, so we click on this little icon, including the current execution plan. And I'm going to take the free query in the same time. Well, let's run this free query. And when the query is finished, you have to click on execution plan just here okay just click on execution plan you see that for the first request the left join just here okay we have 35 percent for the not in we have 35 percent too and for the not exist it's quite similar it's 33 percent okay so we see that the performance is quite i quite sorry similar but it can in some case we can write a left join in nothing or not exist okay uh, personally i have always work with a legend for many reasons when uh, there is a primary key or foreign key and so on okay as i have always found that uh, it's more efficient to do this kind of join but in some cases uh, i have i have put a notching and i have uh, i have seen that sometimes is more Efficient. So it's up to you to see if this kind of SQL query rewriting will be more efficient on your side. Okay? So let's go together in the next demonstration. Accept and intercept. You don't see them very often, even on Transact SQL, but there exist. Uh, exist. Uh, except returns the separate rows on the input query on the let but not find by the query input query on the read. Okay? Intersect return the distinct rows or line uh, that, are, that are generated by both right and left input. I think you got it. It corresponds to a left join and a inner join. Okay? It has intersect uh, correspond to a inner join and a except correspond to a left join. Okay? So let's go together to for the demonstration. Intersect and accept demonstration. The summation has Usual and let's run the classic inner join as we saw before. We have three rows one, three, and five. Okay, for the classic inner join. Okay, let's write the query for the intersect is the same thing that the, that the inner join. You will see that the intercept 
query is a very simple to write for a customer and you have the interface just the first select and view take copy and pass and you have just to change the table you can see that it's very simple to write huh? uh, select intersect and the second table just bottom if i run this query i have exactly the same result one three and five okay and if i also put the execution plan to see which query is the fastest uh, let's run the query in the same times execution plan and we can see that in the execution plan the intersect takes 43 percent and the join just here 57 percent okay so uh, the intercept the intersect sorry is a little bit more speed speed in the join okay except 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 as the same syntax as the intersect so let's copy and paste so here you can see the request with the let join with the filter null the nothing as we saw in the previous demonstration nothing with the sub query and we can also write the exact so i change the intercept with the except. So we Mr. just to see here except and run this query. So normally we have this result just 12 and 13 for Albert Einstein and Chuck Norris by Hoffman. For the notion is the same result and for the accept query I have exactly the same result. Okay. 12 and 30. Okay. So we can in some cases say why not rewrite some request, some query in accept or why not also in notion. Okay, and if we check the execution plan, 22% for the left join, 22% for the not in, but you can see that the except has have not a good result, 56%. Okay. So don't forget that you can rewrite the left join with the exit. So let's go for the next demonstration. I am obliged to make this video because it's possible that you may see hint in the join in some request. Okay. Of course, we are not going to make a performance video as this is not the subject of this formation uh, but it's some for email information so we can change the order to make a join on SQL it can be changed I'm going to tell you very briefly about the join operator that you can have on SQL server the hash join it's a powerful operator that it used for medium and big volumes of data uh, it can be used sometimes on small data volumes as well technically is going to create a table in memory uh, what's called a hash table that will hash the join column and in the second phase um, is going to create a table that we call the probe phase okay 
So let's start on the simple join and look at the execution plan. Don't forget to click on the execution plan button icon. Okay. I click on it and let's run the inner If I getting a look on the execution plan for inner join, it's a hash match in Android. Okay, is the hash match operator that has been chosen for this operation? Okay, so technically, il, it first built a hash table in memory. Okay, and then from each row, from the bottom entry, it analyzes the hash table to generate all the matching rows. Okay, so we can, from the inner join, add between the inner and the join uh, a int. Okay? So, in this example, it's the hash. So, take the hash. Let's run this query, and we can see that it's exactly the same execution plan. Okay, there is no difference. It's exactly the same, the same execution plan. Okay? And if I run the query together, we have exactly the same execution plan. So we, okay, hash mash and hash mash. So, we are going to see next the merge. The merge is a fusion join that is used when the two sets of rows are pre-sorted according to join expression. Um, generally, it's used for very big volumes. It's very powerful too. So instead of hash, we can use merge. Okay, so let's run the query with the merge and you can see that the Operator join operator has changed. Now it's the match join that has been used. Okay. And if we compare the two execution plan, plan sorry, which one is greedier? You can see that the hash join is 40% and the main join is 16, 60%. Okay? So the main join is greedier than the hash join in this query, in this, in this example. There is also a third way to make a join. This is the nested loop. Okay? Nested loop it's, is used for very small volumes. This is the simplest physical implement, implement, implementation sorry, that SQL choose to make join on very small tables. You can see that we change the merge by with the loop. And if I run this query, if we get a look on the operators, we can see here is the nested loop. Okay? So if we are running the Hash, the merge and the loop together. Let's run this free query. We can check very quickly. 11% for the loop join, 36% for the inner join, the sorry, the hash and the merge, 53%. Okay. Here we have a practical case. You see that the nested loop is still less greedy than the hash. So, in some cases, can, can't I play the hint on the joy to see if I can better performance? Okay? Personally, I have rarely seen it where I have to change the way I do a join. In 99% of the case, SQL does it very, very well. Okay? 
it was just to show you that you can change the join orders by putting a hint. There is also remote. Remote here. Remote is if there is a remote linked server. You can put here a remote. I want this query, but I don't have in my server a remote server. So it, 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 um, it takes the ham hash match in this, in this example, sorry. Okay, here generally you will have a remote. So it can be useful in some case. Remember that you can only uh, use remote in a linear tree. You can uh, use a remote in the left tree. It's that he says just here. A remote in can be only specified with the integer clause. Okay? We can also write this way. But the hash option here and add option and add the hash join at the end of the query. You can uh, write by this way. Same thing for the merge. Yeah, same thing for the loop. Okay, if I want this free query, see, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, hash match, merge join, and nested loop. So, in this demonstration, we saw three, four, sorry, four ways to write hint on SQL join add join, merge join, loop join, and remote join. Okay, don't forget this hint if you see uh, uh, one hint or more, more, more hint in SQL script. Okay, but now you, you know what, for which reason is used. So let's go for the next section. To set up the exercise on the joy, we need to create three new tables. One table salary scale, employee, job, statue. Okay? And we insert some data into the free table. Okay? And if you want the free select from this free table, we have some, some data. We have 31 from into the table employee, uh, five Five rows for the salary, salary scale, human source, business developer, recruiter, financial service, and the salary and the uh, job statue with full time contract, part time contract, zero hour contracts, and so on. Okay? Okay, now everything is in place for exercise and good luck. Exercise 26, find the job of each employee in the company. Exercise 27, find the job of each employee in the company. So we go back to the query you worked previously, but using a cross apply. Okay, good luck. Exercise 28, find women who are recruiter. Exercise 29, find people working with a full-time contract with a salary between $2,000 and $3,000. Exercise 30, how to get the two people who do not have a contract yet with the join. Okay. So you must have this result. Okay, it's a screenshot with Marion Cotillard and Brigitte Bardot, who don't have a contract. Find the way to have this same result. For the column uh, without contract, think of a new function that we'll see later in this course, the case when. Okay? So, good luck. Exercise 31, how to get all the people who have a contract with Joel. Okay, 
uh, you have to output the same query. Normally, you should have 29 rows and try to have the same third column with the caseway. Okay, is she has a contact. Okay, so good luck. Exercise 32 find in the same query those who have a contact and those who do not. Okay. Uh, normally, you should have all the rows, the 31 rows, and you have to output the same query with uh, Myron Cotillard with no contact and William Owens with the contact, no contact, and so on, Sylvester Stallone, and so on. Okay? And try to have the same for color with the caseway. Okay? So, good luck. Exercise 33 Can you? Correct me this request. Okay, and I want the same result as at the bottom Jackson 5 and the top 5 person in my employee uh, table. Okay, with the full time contacts. Just top 5 and correct uh, me this query with the join and another alias with which have a error. Okay. So, good luck. Exercise 26. Uh, find the job of each employee in the company. Okay. So, we will make a set a name for the name of the employee. First name. Okay, nothing complicated for the moment. Be job from my employee table. Okay, and a inner join salary scale B, alias B, or C, or Z, as you wish. And e job equal B job. Okay. Forget the alias A for the employee table, and if I run the query, I have I play with select. It's much better. And here I'm going to have all the function of the job of each employee. Okay, Michael Jackson, which who works in human resource, uh, Robert Julia Roberts, who works in recruiter, and so. On. Me to Olivier, who works in business developer. Okay, so in this exercise, you have to do a inner join on the job column. Exercise 27 find the job of each employee in the company by uh, but using a cross apply. I will copy and paste the previous query with the inner join. And we place the inner join and <coughs> replace with the cross apply. Okay. Open the parentheses, select in from my second table, scalar is cable, and where I think you understood job equal B job. And I close the parenthesis with the C for the derivative table. Okay. So, forget the alias for the salary scale table. Now it's good. I must to put, to put a C because the derivable table is a C. Okay. If I put a B, it's not working. You can see it's red. Okay. It's if it's a derivative, you must not see. And if I run the query, I have exactly the same result. Okay, for Michael Jackson, the Lordies, Clint Eastwood, who work in financial service, and so on. And if I get a look on the execution plan for the both query, we have exactly the same 
So we have exactly the same execution plan. 15% and 50% for the inner join and just on the bottom, the closer pair. Exercise 28, find women who are recruited. Copy and paste the previous inner join and copy and paste. And, and we had a where B job. Okay, equal recruiter, we have a cut. And I think you found the answer, gender, equal female. Here I made a join on the salary scale. I take the job, equal recruiter, and gender, female. And I have 66, six, oh, sorry. I have an uh, error uh, for Steve Versus Seven. It's not uh, a woman, don't worry. Uh, Walter Julie, or Rebecca, and Roberta Julia, Grace Kelly, and so on. Exercise 29 find people working with a permanent contract, a full time contract, with a salary between $2,000 and $3,000. Okay. Copy and paste. So in this case, we had an another table for the join. So we make a join on several tables. Uh, it was the goal of this exercise. exercise. So in our job, job status, C on C and client equal a client. Okay, where well, I copy and paste it. Well, C types equal full term context, contract, sorry, and B salary between $2,000 and $3,000. Okay, and if I want this query, I have three persons Michael Jackson, Jolly Angelina, and Emma Watson, who works in the human source with the full-time contacts. Exercise 30, how to get the two people who don't have a contract yet with the job. Okay, but uh, the goal of this exercise is to learn, of course, the lead join and the case when. Okay, the case when function. Of course, we will see uh, this function later in this course. But in this exercise, the answer was case when C types is new, then no contract with the left join, just on the bottom, okay, and as with the alias of the case when no contract, okay. And if I run the query, I have two person, Brigitte Bardot with no contract with the Caswen and Cotier by Okay. So then you realize that the requests are more and more difficult. And this is normal. Think about your starting level and um, you can be proud of proud of yourself. Okay? So this is normal that the requests are more and more um, exercise 31, how to get all the people who have a contract, we join, and in this query, we change the left join by the right, okay, it's easy, and if I run this query, I have 20 nerve rules, we have just to just reverse sorry the join and if we get a look on the case when you see he has a contract and has he has and she has a contract okay with the alias exercise the case when the case when allows to evaluate 
um, a condition and returns a result expression among several possibilities. Case when is something commonly practiced on SQL. Okay, it allows you to return a column depending on the expression you want to have in your result. So let's run the cell it will, uh, start from contact and um, we are going to play with the gender column. Okay, so we are going to say in this column the woman will be uh, the female will be Mrs. and the man will be Mr. So we will there will be a new column that we are going to play in the select by making a the case one. So let's write the query select star and write the case case when gender okay equal one with uppercase then misses and an another when when gender equal ah, then mister I forget the comma just here and uh, you have to put a hand at the and on the case when from contact. Okay. Let's run this query. You have to put the end if you delete the hand and run this query. It doesn't work. Okay. Syntax. And it's syntax near the keyword form. So the hand is mandatory and run this query. So here. A new column that is played in the select by doing the case way. So here the format is missing and the man male is Mr. Okay, you have a new column that is played in the select by doing the case when. Okay, there is also the syntax of the else. If my result is not good, I can give a null over result that I will affiliate. So in this query, select the hedge between 16 and 20, then we are still young, else we are not so young anymore. And if I run this query here, so all, all those who are between 16 and 20, we are still young, uh, 18, 16, uh, 17, and the other, we are not so young anymore, 24, and so on. So, in this demonstration, we see that the case when it can be very practical during certain developments where we can have a request that comes out of more explicit value. Okay, so let's go for the next demonstration. Format. Format is a very powerful function that has greatly facilitated developments, especially on columns in dead format. Um, if you are a developer, you will see that this function will make your life much easier. Instead of making conversion with specific uh, format, or a conversion of a column, you will see that the format function is very useful in some cases. So it allows formatting as a string of date and time and numerical values compatible with regional parameters. The syntax is format with the value, the format function, and the culture. If we do a select on our contact table, we are going to focus on the date of birth column. Okay, so we see the format here. The value is going to
to be the colon. Okay. So copy and paste the syntax and make a zoom for the syntax. So here we have the select top one uh, as date and the function format. Okay, with the value date of birth, the colon date of birth, with the format D for day and the culture. French as French is here, sorry, English and German from my table contact. And if I were this query here we are directly the date of birth that is formatted here we can see the normal date the date in french uh, for august uh, 1976 the format in english and the format in german you can see that it's still very powerful and it can make you development much easier instead of make uh, of making sorry a request that can be very long just to format to a special country you can just put the format with a very simple syntax you can also display the day it's the same syntax we have just replaced the D by the same D with a uppercase. Okay? And if I were this query, you see the power of format. He detects uh, French mercredi 4 8 1976 in English. Format, Wednesday, August for 1976, and in German. Okay. You can convert currencies to. You can convert currency values according to the given culture. I have already created a table, table money, with a currency column in money uh, format, and insert just some simple rule uh, in this table and just in this query we change the d and make a uh, change the d by a c for the currency and if i run the query sql server will convert all the row in dollar in euro, in English, in Swedish, Arabic, and Thai. You can see the different currency for each country. I will let you take a look on the Microsoft MSDN site regarding the format function. You will see that, it, that there are a lot of currencies depending on the country. So I will let you to do some research uh, format, what format uh, looks like. So maybe you are going to rewrite some code because uh, it must be rewritten for a simply uh, way to, to, to run this query with the format function. For information, to see the default SQL language on your, on your SQL Server engine, it's SP configure with the value default language. Mine is configure, configured value is zero. And if I run the exec sp help language, zero, it's equal to English. Okay. If you are, uh, if you have a SQL engine in French, it's two. In Dutch, it's one, and so on. Okay. So never, never forget this powerful format function, which can help you greatly in your future development. So let's go to the next demonstration. The if, the if evaluates a list of conditions. It, uh, like, it's like 
the case when, it returns an expression among several possibilities. Okay, uh, if is basically a quick way to write a case expression. Okay, in the syntax, it will be uh, if with too too high with the boolean expression, the true value and the false value. Let's take the case of the case when again. In this example, we can see that the case when the gender is female, then Mrs. Else, it's Mr. And at the end of the query, the end of the case, sorry, we have the hand from contact order bar gender. If I oh, this query, we can see for the gender female we have Mrs. and for the male gender we have Mr. Okay? So we can write it with the if. So select if gender with parentheses gender equal woman then Mrs. Else Mr. And we close the parentheses. Okay, I forget the code here. From contact other by gender. If I want the query, if you don't, oh, yes, I make a mistake, I change, I put the good if we too high, and if we check the result, it's exactly the same thing. For the female, we have Mrs., and for the male, we have the Mr. Okay? And if we enable the execution plan and run the same query at the same time, the both query at the same time, we can say, we can check that it's exactly the same execution plan. 50% for the two queries. Okay? So there is no big difference between the if and the case when. If you want a simpler syntax for the case when, the if exists. Okay? So, let's go for the next demonstration. Offset fetch and next row. The offset fetch close gives uh, you the ability to extract only one window uh, or result page from a result set. This actually allows uh, allow, you to skip a few lines to have uh, a result set according with the offset clause. Okay? Order by is mandatory with the offset and fetch. We are obliged to put an order by when using this function. Offset indicates the number of lines to in your and fetch indicates the number of rows to return after the offset clause uh, has been processed. Okay? In fact, well, this query, here I have my first, uh, I have my first uh, 15 rows, sorry, which, which are classified, uh, classified in alphabetical order. Okay? And with offset close just here, okay, offset 10 rows, with the offset close, I'm going to skip the first 10 rows and stop at, you can see here, it's Roberts, Julia, Julia Roberts, and if I want the offset close, you can see it's Sharon Stone. 
and you can see in my example that Sharon Stone is at the 11, 11 rows. Okay? So I skip the first 10 rows with the close offset. What if I want just the first three lines, three rows, with the next five rows? So the syntax is select from contact, order by name, offset, sorry for the zoom, offset, three rows, three rows, fetch next five rows only. Okay? So I have to do the offset. So I gonna to ignore the first three rows with the and with the fetch close. I'm going to take the next next five rows. And if I run this query, remember Eastwood and Moreau. Okay. And if at the We can see that it's worked perfectly. It, it starts at Eastwood. Okay? And finish to beat the next five rows. Okay? Eastwood and row. It's perfect. And in the, if I change the offset five and here seven, we change Jackson. Michael Jackson and Liz Taylor and so on. Okay. The offset clause is mandatory with the fetch. Okay. If you don't but don't write the offset, if you want this query, it doesn't work. In the usage of the next in the fetch statement. And keep in mind that top cannot be combined combined with offset and fetch in the same query expression. If I want select top two from contact order by name and with the close offset and the fetch next, it's you have a error message. A top cannot be used in the same query or a subquery as the offset. Okay. So Let's go to the next demo. Left and right. Left and right are something you will see uh, very often in Transact SQL. It allows you to extract the hand of the string by defining uh, the desired length. Uh, if we do a select from my table contact, we gonna play uh, on name column and the first name column okay let's let's check the syntax of left and right left with the name of the color comma and the number of character we want to remove uh, for the this example jackson okay uh, right it's the same syntax for the left with the name of color, comma, and the number of characters we want to remove. Okay, if I want this select, what do I get? You can see for the colon Jackson, left name, okay, he took just the, uh, the two first characters. Okay, on the left, ja. And for the next, the column first name, d'accord, he start, uh, he start from the right and stop to the first five characters. Okay, and the name is Gael. Okay, you understand that Gael is Michael. You can have a concatenate, concatenate, sorry, the field. It doesn't help much in my example, but you can concatenate fields with left and right. 
remember, keep in mind, uh, you can concatenate a lot of other fields. This is just an example. So, in this example, select name plus write first name. And if I want this query, so here you can see that it gives a word first name. It can, uh, for example, help you in naming your future kids. Okay, we concatenate the name that are here, uh, name that are here, and the first name here. Okay, Jackel, Thalys, uh, Inclined, Webrus, and so on. Dinardo, it's not bad, Dinardo. We just did left plus right and gives this beautiful name. Okay, so let's go for the next demonstration. Trim, L trim, L trim, upper and lower demonstration. Trim, remove the specified character at the beginning or the end of a string. So it removes the space. If you have space in your character, trim, L trim, and L trim does it. Trim only appeared in SQL Server 2017. Okay, so if you have uh, SQL Server in, with a version of 2014 or 2012, uh, it won't work. For our test, uh, we will create a test trim table and we will insert three values, including a four character on my left for the colon value L3, okay, two character to my right, just here to space, into the colon value L3, and the another value to space, to my right and to my left, to space here, and to space here, for the last value, okay, so, I have already create the table and insert this value and if we make the select you can see that the syntax is very simple is select l trim with the name of my column l trim and trim okay so we will play the request with the free trim uh, with and let's run the query. Sorry, I have, I forgot to create the table and insert the value. And if I run the query, I have this value. You can see that uh, the four characters to the left have disappeared just here. For the L trim, the two characters to my right have also disappeared for the L trim. And for the trim, two space to my right and to my left have disappeared for the trim. Okay? So remember, the trim uh, remove the space on the left and on the right. Okay? So in some cases, the trim, air trim, and air trim can be very handy. Upper, upper and lower. Upper and lower. Uh, hello to you to transform a text into lower or upper case. The syntax is simple, it's like a trim. So you write upper with the name of the column. First name from contact. And if I run this query, you can see that all the values have changed uh, from uppercase. Okay, Michael, Kelly, Kint, and so on. And lower is just the opposite. It changes it change everything from uppercase to lowercase. Okay? So, let's go to the next demonstration. 
the substring. The substring is used to extract a string of characters from a specified length. Okay? Uh, I will always use my favorite table, contact, and if we want just the first name as initial, we're gonna use the substring function. So let's go for the query, select substring, okay, with the function with my name of the column. So we're gonna use one and one, close the parentheses as initial. name from my first name sorry from my favorite uh, contact okay we have you know, just here and if we play the query you can see that the substring take only the first character okay and stop at the first it start at the first and stop at the first. Okay, so Michael, L from Liz, and so on. Okay, so you can see that it's pretty easy to set up. You can string from, you can take string, sorry, from a column. And if I want to, uh, to take the first two letters of the name and the next three. Okay, so copy and paste. And so, in this example, we have the two and the three. And if I play this query, you can see here, ik, fantastic uh, first name, and so on. And L, Lee Clint, for Bruce, for Leonardo, for Brad. Okay? So here I take. Uh, I took the first two letters and the next three. I zapped, uh, I zapped the this letter. Okay, uh, I can put seven if I want. And what's happened if I put seven? You see that the initial has changed. Okay, Michael and and so on. You can take all the characters you want in a string of Character. So, in development, the substring sub can be very useful. So, let's go for the next demonstration. Replace and then, first of all, we will talk about the replace. Replace, uh, replace all occurrence of a specified string, string type uh, value with another string type value. Okay, this, uh, this the syntax is quite simple. It's select, replace with two parentheses and the uh, values that we want to replace. So we are going to replace in this example the king pop, the king of pop, replace the pop by the through. Okay, so I think you understand. If I want this query, I am right now the king of sound. Okay, you replace pop with the sound. We can also make a replace on a contact table uh, for. Let's have fun replacing, for my example, Michael with Wonder Woman. Okay, we are going to replace this value. So, select first name, replace with the color we want to replace, Michael with Wonder Woman. Let's run my wonderful query. And you can see that it works perfectly. Michael with Wonder Woman. So we see that the replace 
in simple to set up. The len, the len returns the number of characters of the specified string type expression. So it calculates the length of the string. In this way, you can, in the contact table, you can calculate all the length that are in a column. Okay, you can see that the syntax is quite simple. Len, len, and the column length as length. And if I want the query, you can see it takes for Michael seven, Liz three, Kelly five characters, and so on. Okay, so that's all for it. replace and len demonstration. So let's go for the next demonstration. The choose function. The choose function returns the element to the specified index from a list of values in SQL. Um, I will do a small demonstration for you. Use function as usual. And I do a select choose with this syntax. Okay. This following example returns the first item in the value list. Uh, in this example, one for friends. I want to take friends in this list of values, Belgium and Gens as country. I take one. Okay. And if I run this query, you can see that it's friends. It works perfectly. And if I want to take the Belgian country, I think you understand, I put the two here. Run this query, and this is Belgium. For now, it's quite simple. And if I set the index to zero, just here, what, the select, what does the select give? It returns the uh, null value. Okay. Okay, we will see if we can replace the case when with a choose. Here uh, I say when it's one, then January, then it's two, then February, and so on, and three for March, and so on. And if, alors, so you can see there is a new function, that part. Of course, we go from uh, that part further in this course. So the syntax is that part with it's the part on the column, okay, that part, I want the month on this column. If I run this wonderful query, you can see that Michael Jackson, whose date of birth is 8, so August, for Grace Kelly it's May, 05 for May, and so on. John, Georges Clooney, 01 for January. Okay, so you can see that the case when works very well for my query. The question is, can choose do it? Let's do a choose. We're going to define a value for it in its table. Choose with the date part and the name of the column with the month and we enter all the values for the choose, the index, mix. So January, February, and until the December. And if I work this query, and you can see it works very well. For Michael Jackson, date of birth for August, August, and so on. May, and January for my friend George Clooney, it's Okay, it's worked perfectly. So the choose can be practical for you, development. 
That's all you can do with the choose value. So let's go for the next demonstration. Coalesce. Coalesce is also something we see very commonly in Trozac SQL. It will evaluate the arguments in order and returns the current value of the first expression that does not initially take the value null. Okay? A simple example. We do. We do select coalesce with two parentheses with a null value. Okay? And the next value. Coalesce. So if I want this query, it will zap the first null value. Okay? And we'll take the one just like that. So coalesce uh, allows us to not, sorry, not to evaluate nulls value uh, in the query when we have a lot of them in our select. So let's create a simple table with three columns, number one, number two, and number three, and it's just some simple word with Null values. No values and the handover or with two null values. And if I want to select for my number, I have some simple values in my table. News and new. I think you understand. See if I want to remove the new value in my select. So select queries. Number one, number two, and number three as number of phone from my number. So if I work this query, you can see that in QLS remove all the null values in my select. So it's going to be smart enough and it's going to remove all the null values, even the two null values in the two columns where there are the two values here, okay? So uh, you can see that it's smart enough to do it. And it can be very handy in some query, uh, so query, sorry, if you don't want the new values to point you select. Okay, so let's do for the next demonstration. Union and Union Hall. Union and Union Hall is a command that concatenates the result of two or more queries. On the other hand, each of the queries to concatenate must return the same number of columns. If you don't take the same number of columns, when you make an union, it doesn't work. Example of two table we create two table create table one and insert just two single row Wonder Woman and Captain America and the second table with client two with Wonder Woman in duplicate okay and Dag Barber my all file let's create the table and execute execute sorry the buff select here we see that there is a duplicate in the value wonder woman okay so let's see what select union gives what will it can see the syntax is very simple select from my table client one union select from my table client two okay it's quite simple and you can see he took Captain America Dark Vador and Wonder Woman so he concatenated the two select from the two tables he gives the total result of the client table. 
Okay? And you can see that the duplicate has been deleted. No duplicate in my union. There is also union hall. Union hall, it allows you to take also the duplicates. You can see this syntax. You have just to add all. Okay? And if I run this query, I have Wonder Woman two types. Wonder Woman and two types. Okay? Union. Union, it takes out the duplicates. Union all, it doesn't take them out. So, when you think of union, you think about the concatenation of the table. Okay? So, let's go for the next demonstration. Drop if exist. Drop if exist, if exist will simplify your work when deleting objects on SQL Server. It's new from SQL Server 2016 and it makes you, your work much easier. When you will see it, you will say there is finally this function. I have already created a simple table, created a simple table test and uh, in the, with the whole style, whole school style, we write a delete by this way. If object ID with the name of the table to drop, tip you, is not new, drop table. Okay? And it's work. Okay? The table has been deleted. It was quite complicated to set up, not, not, the, not very complicated, but it's still high to be right. Okay? And let's create again the table. And here we see we have simplified the way of deleting SQL object. Draw table if exists with the name of table and that's enough. You can see that the syntax is much simpler. And it's the same result. The table has been deleted. Okay. It also works for a lot of objects on SQL Server, for the assembly, the database, the default, the index, the procedure, and so on. For the sequence, the type, the view, the, type, the, view, the, sch the schema. Okay. So now, if you are a 2016 SQL version, always use drop exist.